won. Philip, a long season for yourself back in Ireland at last. How's the season been? Yeah, like you said, it's been very long. Started in uh, down under in January and finished up in Beijing, the last race of the year. So enjoyed a nice break there. A couple twelve days in Miami, lying on the beach just to recharge the batteries. So back in Ireland now, and my three weeks is up. Took three weeks off, so I'm starting back training again. Um, but overall, yeah, great season. Really happy with it. A uh, bit of a change in the weather coming back to Ireland the last few days. The rain is down. Yeah, I mean, you're always prepared for it here in Ireland. wasn't really expecting uh, the sunshine, but I got enough sunshine in, in Miami for uh, for the time I was there, so I'm happy enough just to come home and catch up with friends and family again for a week. So, Tell me, uh, the advent of cycling and professional cycling, particularly in Ireland, have you seen the difference on the streets the last while, more people on bikes? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Every time I come home, even up in Donegal, when I was cycling, there was one club and maybe 10 or 12 active members. Now there's four or five clubs and hundreds and hundreds of people are cycling up there. So even in Donegal, I can see it every time I'm home. And obviously it's the same down here in Dublin and all over the country. So it's great to see it. Tell me there's greater depth in cycling as well because we have people who don't necessarily race the bike, but they're out there touring, they're participating in sportives. But as well for the kids, there's a lot more kids getting into cycling. Why, why is that, do you think? I think it's just kids are getting inspired by what they see on TV and before you know when I was growing up it was kind of very much just football and there wasn't really a huge range of sports to choose from you know but now I think cycling is just uh, it's grown and grown become more popular um, obviously like with families maybe the parents are into cycling so getting kids bikes and it's great to see some families out cycling together and it becoming a real family family affair you know Tell me your first memory of the bike. You must have been young enough when you started on the bike. Uh, I wasn't your typical... When I started racing, was quite late, but I, I was always into cycling. Like a, I was probably four or five when I got my first bike. And I remember getting... The I even like vividly remember getting my stabilizers taken off for the first time and shooting off down the road without stabilizers. It was great. Um, and then, yeah, I was always just messing around on mountain bikes and building BMXs and building ramps and just messing around on bikes and it was kind of a mode of transport too really just heading down to my mate's house and um, it was only when I was probably 15 that I actually really got into the racing part of it. Tell me you mentioned about the stabilizers the sense of freedom do you still have that on the bike do you still get that opportunity out training? Uh, the sense of freedom part's gone a little bit now because I have me like have to upload my power every day and training file and everything but um Obviously, I still enjoy the bike. Like you know, after all these years, it is kind of a little bit of it's it's a different now because it's your job, so you have to treat it like that. There's obviously some some days you would rather just take it easy and you have to train hard, but that's that's part of the job. But in general, I I enjoy it still. You know, still have a great passion for it. Tell me, up in Donegal, obviously you're from up in the north part. The Ross goes up to Donegal every couple of years. You've noticed more people on the road, and you would have been with the four masters originally um, it must give you a great sense of uh, relief really to see so many participating in cycling now and even coming up through the ranks as well enjoying cycling yeah it's like I said it's, it's something I'd never expect to see or expected to see coming home um, like when I went away as a kid you know moving to France it was very like I don't think it was uh, it was a lot of people wondering what I was doing like you know they didn't see it as a as a job or a possibility that you could make a career out of it. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember I was always going home and I'd meet up with friends and you'd say, ah, I'm cycling. And they'd say, yeah, but what's your real job? You know, what what do you do to make a make a living? But now everybody knows, obviously knows the, the story and keep up to date with the racing that I'm doing. Um, it's just great to see you. Yeah. It's great. Big interest, of course, back in May, the Giro d'Italia came here. I was fortunate enough to be up at the start in Belfast and uh, the announcement of the riders. That launch, that meeting the public, it was absolutely incredible. How was it for you? Uh, yeah, it was incredible. It's something I'm not used to, being a rider. Obviously, I'm not a big winner. I'm sort of one of the average riders, domestics, as we say. Like So... I'm not used to huge attention at the bigger races. I'm usually just blend into the crowd, but there it was. It was. I uh, was getting a lot of the attention, so it was really nice. Strange, it was unusual, but it was a great feeling coming out onto the presentation there in Belfast. Like with the noise of the crowd, it was really like 
hair stand on the back of your neck moment that uh, I won't forget for a while. How proud were you as an Irish man to stand there facing the thousands on that day and then the hundreds of thousands along the route? It must have been something special. Yeah, I mean, it was probably made more special because uh, I got into cycling or I just sort of started following cycling in 98 when the tour came to Dublin. And um, I watched it there, and that was where I first started kind of dreaming about trying to become a professional cyclist. So for it to just come full circle then again and start a Grand Tour at home, was uh, I just never dreamt that it was going to happen, so it made it even more special. I think it's something that a lot of professional riders may never get the opportunity to do. Again, European-based, uh, you know, for the riders that are over in Europe, whatever about UK or Ireland or otherwise, um, and of course to have other Irishmen there as well participating. On During the course of the year that you had the Giro, you had a bit of freedom because there was no nominated leader as such, and you got results out of it. Yeah, I came close a few times. You know, It was, uh, it was very much a free roll, which is strange in this team, you know, with Richie, Richie Port getting sick just before the start. So we were really going for stage wins and just trying to pick your day to get in the break. So in a way, it was unfortunate. And with the Giro in Ireland, there was no stage that was going to be suitable for me to try to do something. So I had to kind of, the head decided over the heart there, really, you know, not to go up in a silly breakaway move all day. So, yeah, it was nice, you know, especially the la- that last week, the last 10 days, I was started really to come round and came close. But just, there were too many little Colombians in the race, really, I think, that were <laughs> little 50 kilo Colombian. Buttons. They were performing, but. For people to understand for yourself, without that nominated team leader, with the opportunity to go for stages, that's something that, as a domestic or super domestic, it's not going to happen that often. There's a job to be done at the same time. Yeah, I mean, on this team, you're always going to go to, especially a Grand Tour, with a big leader like Chris or Richie or whoever it may be. So, um, yeah, it's just part of the job, really, especially on this team that you your own personal result is left to one side and it's more about the, the bigger picture really with your team leader and the team result. So. We saw a lot of that then in the Vuelta de España. For yourself during the course of the year and probably over the last couple of years, it's been a climax in so far as the riding that you were doing for any people watching this video clip at the front as nominated rider ahead of Chris Froome. There's a huge uh, amount of uh, intensity, focus and there really is a job to be done there. Yeah, I mean, every day, there was no day where we could kind of say have a day off. Um, on the bus before the start, was like, it was good in a way because everybody had a certain role to do, we all had a job to do. And um, it was high, kind of, a lot more stressful and tough. But looking back, you know, we we're all very proud of what we did in the Vuelta this year. And I suppose when you see a leader like Chris putting it all, laying it all out there, um, you know, it takes sort of, it gives you a bit more um, satisfaction when you do it. Like, you know. Tell me, you're riding at the front, you're hitting some of these absolutely uh, mammoth climbs. It's a position that you may not have been in uh, over the last number of years. It's now a grand tour. You're on the front for Chris. He's sitting in second place on GC and he's looking to win overall. Mm. What does that tell us about where you're going in terms of the next couple of years? It must have given you and the team huge confidence. Yeah, I suppose, uh, like when I went to America a couple of years ago, I think a lot of people saw me winding down over there, maybe winding down my career. Um, I didn't really see it like that at the time, you know, but it's always very difficult to go from America, stepping down from Pro Tour to Pro Continental, to come back again to a big Pro Tour team. But I always knew that, sort of, if I got my health right and got everything um, back on track again, that I could could possibly make it back there um but yeah i mean it was just one of them things really everything everything all the stars aligned uh in 2013 and uh got the call up so it wasn't wasn't a difficult decision to make really to come back so it's a season on reflection 2014 one important thing we look at stage results and we look at um third on uh, stage of the Giro, stage 18, and then also up in the Tour of Poland and the general classification of where riders are looking to warm up for the for the Vuelta. But that domestic or super domestic role, how much does that take out of you? Because you have to be minded as well to be in the position to ride um, at the end of these stages. Is, is it very, very demanding? It is, yeah. I mean, it, it's tough, but at the end of the day, you can 
that's why we ride so easy. You might see me riding with 10k to go on the front, and then I'll I'll come in 10 minutes down, you know. But that's that's what it's all about. As soon as your job's finished, you think about tomorrow. And if I lose 10 minutes or 15 minutes riding into the finish, it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, it's 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 tough. Like it's just it is more, especially the first week, 10 days. We were always like trying to ride at the front, and I suppose Chris had a. Uh, he kind of had fresh memories from the tour and he said right from the very start of the race that he wanted to go back into the old way of riding with Team Sky always at the front, out of trouble which is obviously great, great great for him but it just makes it quite hard for us really but we were, as soon as we saw that uh, he was really there to try to win the race we all just got behind him So tell me after finishing the year with uh, Team Sky you're back in Dublin and in Ireland to launch a new range of bikes here, the Team Sky Frog range, um, a great range of bikes and uh, for children and youths coming up through cycling, a great opportunity to align themselves to Team Sky. Yeah, I mean, it's a great opportunity to, I mean, it's it's a far cry really from what I started off on, like a bike that was 10, 10 times too big for me and, um, you know, it's uh, definitely a great range for for kids to start off on the bike, you know, and they can all go out as a really as a family you know and and enjoy enjoy that aspect it's very important for children youths and as you mentioned through families getting out it's freedom it's fresh air but th- these bikes in particular they're aluminium bikes which makes them different to the other you know normal range of bikes they're lighter what difference does that make for child for youth having a lighter bike I think as a kid you know the the earlier you start I think it's it's easier to pick up the skills involved and um, certainly for a lot of the, the, the pros, the really good pro bike handlers, whenever you speak to them, they've, always, they've started from when they were 8 or 9 or 10, you know, they've, they've started really young. Um, but yeah, to get used to like the, the narrower tyres and, you know, just the, the drop bars, as you can see, it's like quick release wheels and the, the handlebars are set up like a race bike with a drop so it's it's a good way to get a, introduced to a race bike I think um, Can children get involved in cycling at any age do you think as young as 2 and 3? I don't know about 2 and 3 but uh, uh, I think yeah I mean it's all about enjoyment at that age you know it's not really about racing I mean you can race your mates around the estate really or do whatever you want at that age as long as you're enjoying it um, like I said when I first started it was about building ramps and having a bit of fun and going down to friends who were a couple of miles down the road and gave, gave you that freedom of transport. So. so if people are looking to come in and look at the range, they can come in here to Cycleways. You're back in Ireland for the rest of the weekend. Next year is going to be a big year again for you, I expect. Yeah, I try and build on what I did this year. You know, um, I've got that sort of domestic role down now. So you know, I'd done it a little bit in the past, but this year was the first time I did it for a big leader. So... Uh, yeah, really looking forward to it. You know, it's not like one of those things where I want personal success. I'm quite happy to to work for a big leader and get a lot of satisfaction out of that too. Okay, Philip, thanks for joining us here at uh, Cycleways. You can have a look at the range of the bikes on Cycleways.com.